Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about two poems. One is called Word 7 by William Wordsworth, and another one is Sonnet 12 by another William, William Shakespeare. Here is a copy of both poems. Each of you will get and then I would like you to take 10 minutes to read them and think about the meaning, the symbol, and image in each of the poems. Because although they are very different, they share a similar theme. 10 minutes later. Great! I'm glad that you've all read the poems now. Be before I break the class up into groups, I want you to please look up here and listen for a few minutes. Well, I show you some black and white images that relate to the theme of each poem. As you can tell, there are seven little children in this image, and of course you must be thinking about we are seven, because the little girl in the poem keeps referring to her family as having seven children. However, we know that after the poem talk about talk with the little girl, he finds out that she is actually all alone. This is a contrast in the poem that shows how even time and distance and death have not made the little girl forgot her family. Otherwise, in Sonnet 12, there is a mention of how a loved one is treasured, but that the poet realized that they won't always be young and beautiful like the young couple in this picture. That after time passes, the young and beauty give away, and that eventually people don't look the same and they will eventually die. So the theme of this poem one of which is a sonnet and one of which is a lyrics is the same. They are both about death and how people live on their memories and in art, but that otherwise time will either take us too early or at a later date, sad and yet also a fact that must be dealt with by all who are living. Now, please join the group. I will assign you um, and use the, using this chart. Please analyze the same symbol and meaning of these poems. You have 30 minutes and then I will compare all the answers and give you some possible answers for my analysis as well. Good luck and enjoy your poetry reading and analysis assignment. I'm here if you have any questions. Thirty minutes later. Okay, guys, I have been around to look at your answers. And I see you've all done very well work, and thank you for your interest and attention. Now I'm going to share some of the possible answers based on what all of you come up with. Okay. Question 1. How does the poet show the path of the time in the poem? In Weird 7, 
The poem is about while talking to the little girl about all of her siblings and their whereabouts, the poet reveals that although it has been some time since the family has been apart due to geographic or time or distance and death, the little girl continues to counter her family as being comprised of seven children, despite the fact that she is alone living in the college with her mother. In Sonnet 12, Shakespeare shows the passage of the time through reference to various symbols and metaphors for the change that takes place like the transfer from day to night, a violet past prime, sable curves all civil or into white, trees losing their leaves, crops being has harvested, white breastly bread and the general metaphor of the death of beauty and the size of time harvesting all life when he rides and nothing against time size can make defense. Make bright to brave him when he takes the hands. Even his beloved, who is still young and beautiful, the poet, the poet realized will be taken from him. In the end, all will have to surrender to the ravage of time and age. Number two. Discuss and preface the meaning of a few lines from each poem. In Weird 7, she, uh, she had a rustic woodland air and she was widely clad. Her eyes were fair and very fair. Her beauty made me glad. This is a description of a little girl who is obvious poor and also a very innocent and sweet little country child. This adds to the pastoral quality of the poem and the emphasis the poet and the reader will feel for the little girl alone. In Sonnet 12, this is an obvious reference to the passage of the time, as often is likened to the image of a grim reaper who with his size harvest as life be life by consuming it through death. The idea is that while we must all succumb to death, the only thing that really saved anyone is the purgy that live behind. The poet suggests that without the descendant of our own, we all will be taken to meet the finality of death. Because all and nothing against time size can make defense safe bread to brave him while he takes the hunt. And question number three. Pick out three symbols from each poem. In Weird 7, the first symbol is the little college girl. She symbolizes innocence and life in the face of death and lose. Another symbol is the number 7. It is a number that the child keeps coming back to so he is alone. And the only child left in her family home. It reminds us of how she doesn't does not see herself as alone despite the fact of time, distance and death having parted her from her siblings. And the last scene is the last symbol is the churchyard. Though graves are not mentioned nor death expectedly reflected to it is about death.
In Shakespeare's Sonnet 12, the color referred in the poem are sable, white, and green. They symbolize the passage of youth into old age and life into death. The poets refer to gray and white, symbolize old age, while he uses green and sable to symbol life and usefulness as in the line, and summer greens all graded up in shelves, brown on the bare with white and brusly bread. This contribute to the melancholy and res resolved mood of the poem, which accept that there is little that can be done to prevent time from doing what it does. And this is saddened, but also what makes each moment and season precious. And number four. What is the mood and atmosphere in each poem? In the poem We Are Seven, the poet creates a sense of earnest at the beginning of the poem by describing a fear in the wild clay child playing alone and when he asks her how many there are in her family, she applies that there are seven in all which turns out to be an odd sort of counting of her siblings since we learn that Two live in another place, and two live in, um, and two are at sea, and two are in the graveyard. This is highly effective as it creates a scene of an imaginative and sad child trying to cheer herself by conti continuing to hold on to her memory of her missing siblings. In the sonnet, the sonnet is romantic so through that um, subject of the poem is death and a sad and rather dark topic. The poet is also hopeful because he believes that as long as the poem except the one he loves will live on and never fade from beauty or life. Question number five. What is the poem about? The poem Word 7 is about the imagination of well of a little girl to keep on um, believing that she is still connecting to her depart and dead siblings. It is so her memory it is through her memory and her word that her her siblings continue to exist despite the fact that those both live and uh, far away and so th those who were dead are not there was her in shakespeare this is a poem the way of all things which is to grow old and die However, it is also about the feeling and emotion of love and hope that have an internal power when they are applied to art or poetry. That is the only way to immortalize our memories. And number six. When was the poem written and how is this important to, it, to the, its meaning. The poem where seven was published in 1810, a period of time when many people died of tuberculosis or consumption. This type of illness often took the young and older and weaker first through it um, first 
though it was also a general clash during those times. This kind of historical reference is important since many childhood and infertility illness that used to wipe out many people in those periods are nearly all educated now or only found in very poor or underprivileged populations. In Sonnet 12, like many of works, this sonnet was likely written or and or published in the early 1600s or the Isolibrian era. We know that this was the time of the purge and also before the advent of modern medical or other scientific knowledge about illness, disease, or death. However, it is also the time of counterly love and when people, especially men, would woo by writing letters, poems, and such about the object of their affection. And number seven. What is the rhyme, rhyme create in the, this poem? What is the structure? For we are seven, the words of each other line rhyme, so all the stanza are A, B, A, B, except the first stanza, which is A, B, C, B. There are four lines in each stanza. It follows the lyrics style. For the Shakespearean in sonnet 12, rhyme is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F. GG. There is only one stanza which is 14 lines, and the rhyming couplet at the end is the resolution of the poem. And for question number 8, which of the two poems did you enjoy the most and why? Be sure to provide your own personal opinion while also referring to the structure of the poem. This is only my example. You can have your own choice and idea. I enjoy Woods was poem where seven, the most mostly important, I understood it more than I did Shakespeare's Sonnet. I guess it was almost the language of the poem and the fact that what was poem was easier to read and the rhyme just flowed more. There was also a good deal of repetition which create a kind of echo of the scene in We Are Seven. Okay. Well, that's a conclusion. That concludes our lesson for today. Thank you, and see you all again tomorrow.